finally, I am on Hollywood Raw podcast. Some call me a legend. Some call me God. But the reality is I'm just Nick Ritchie. I got divorced. Well, she left, she left me. But uh, I'll tell you all about it. Tune in. Hollywood Raw podcast. I'm just a broken man. Yo, what's up, Hollywood Raw family? How are you guys doing? Like, subscribe, follow our YouTube channel. I'll follow you back if you do it. Uh, comment down below. All right. So our guest today is a huge personality in the land of Hollywood. He's an internet personality who was the founder of a very controversial website, controversial gossip website called thedirty.com. He is now the CEO of Celeb Magazine, and he is an OG of the Hollywood scene, Nick Ritchie. So we are here with the legend, Nick Ritchie from thedirty.com. I mean, I remember the dirty, like when it first came out, my friends were hitting me up about the dirty, like, man, this site is legendary. You know, how would you? For people who weren't familiar with the dirty, how would you explain Nick the dirty.com? Uh, I guess I'll I'll take the what the media says. It's it's the bathroom wall. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was basically a place. Um, I call it civilian paparazzi, but it was a, a reality internet, a place where people could just vent their frustrations on their neighbor, or their coworker, or their girlfriend, or or ex wife or whatever um it was it was awesome you know people would submit the world and i would be in there and i would pick and choose what would go up and i would just throw in my two cents of uh what people wanted to know about a certain person um it was the first uh, the only way i like when i go out I, and i drink now with my buddies i tell them like it was kind of like yelp for people you know <laughs> Yeah, so, that's a good way to put it, actually. Yeah. So, but I'm four years removed. So don't, don't, I'm trying to be a normal guy like Dax now. And, and <laughs> <laughs> so let's not tie uh, me too much. No, no. I was just, I was thinking back because TMZ was obviously rising at the same time the dirty.com was rising. So, you know, we obviously knew you, we knew you guys over there. And I remember getting made fun of on the dirty.com. Like, what was it? Scissor hands? What was it called? When you like do the peace sign? Scissor game mafia. <laughs> Scissor game mafia. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, but it was fun. It was a good, it was a good website to go. And I mean, it's honestly just talking shit on other people. Hey, well, talking listen, shit on other people, but it was entertaining. It was a different time. It was a different time. Yep. And, you know, I don't think I could get away with it in this day and age. Um, but back then people were into the sarcastic dry humor, uh, that I had. And, uh, yeah, there wasn't, there was no like movements, you know, now everything's a movement. You, you walk outside, it's a movement. So you have to just be careful. So uh, you couldn't get away with it now, but back then it, there was no rules really. Right. MySpace was starting to be like starting to fizzle out. Facebook was coming up. TMZ started blowing up and we were just riding that wave of, um and and i think what what really blew it up dax was when we started posting the athletes because the athletes didn't have there wasn't tmz sports there wasn't anything like that and i, I remember when matt liner and nick lachey were partying it, it, with those asu girls and he got he nick lachey got busted or or for cheating or something happened and we blew we broke that story with liner and the beer bong and then the cardinals benched him you know and then we were all, we were everywhere so it was breaking little stories here and there that really catapulted and obviously TMZ helped because they would piggyback the stories and Harvey was a huge fan and, and it just kind of made me who I was, you know? How did you like actually start? Was it just like, Oh, this is a fun idea or like you were seeing stuff out there and you're like, this would be fun to have a website devoted towards and like what year people kind of talking smack on each other. Like what year are we talking around here? I think we're talking like 2000, in six or seven something like that okay that sounds about right yeah and um how do all great things start they start because you know you, you're chasing a chick and you you get mad at the girl and you get resentful and you decide that you know you need to talk trash on the person indirectly so i started getting really you know mad at women and and uh and not not from like a um 
disgruntled point of view, but I was just like, okay, I, I was in Scottsdale and Scottsdale at that time was the Dubai of America. And it was just, people were beautiful. Everyone was beautiful. So I was just making fun of, you know, the girls that thought they were Paris Hilton in Scottsdale. You know, they were just going out flaunting their plus twos, as I called them, the fake, the breast augmentations and their plastic surgery and all this stuff. And, and, uh, it just kind of went viral because there was nothing like it. Like people were shocked. Like, how could you just put a picture of someone on the internet? It, it's pretty much like Instagram before Instagram, but there was there was privacy was still kind of a thing. And people were just like, how can you like talk about other people? It, they were just, their minds were blown. And then I started getting sued left and right. It was fun. So <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> I mean, that's the wild part here again, Sue. But I don't even know, you know, how were you able to get sued, though? Because, you know, there is the freedom of the press. There's freedom of speech. But, you know, why – how does – you know, and we're not lawyers, but can you explain why there would be lawsuits, though, or how there would be possible? Well, it just – it never – there was no – there was no case law for it. Like, there was this, there's the CDA, which is the Communications Decency Act, which was kind of the, the shield that I was using. Um, but it never got really to a point. Um, cause the internet, there was nothing really like it. Like the, the question was whether if a person who owned a website could be liable for third party content. And, uh, what happened was, is I took it a little bit to the extreme or to the edge. Um, and eventually, you know, I, I, I was in two jury trials, got to the, the you know, what is it? Uh, superior court level or the the ninth the ninth circuit court ninth level? Court? Yeah, and 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 it became case law with that that Sarah Jones the, the Bengal cheerleader. Yeah, that was a big. Um, one. Yeah, and I won that one, and then after that, oh, it was crazy. After that, I never got sued again. And um, the cool part was is like TMZ, uh, Yahoo, Amazon, Zuckerberg, everyone everyone wrote amicus briefs for me. They all had my back all their lawyers were involved because if I lost, everyone was screwed. Like the internet was kind of YouTube and Facebook and all these sites would have had to shut down. So it was, it was kind of a huge, huge deal and kind of made me infamous. Like that was it. Like as soon as I won that case, it was, that was, you know, the stamp, the, the, and what was, you know, for people who are first listening though, Nick, what was that? What was that story? That big lawsuit? Um, so this cheerleader uh, in Cincinnati, was uh got submitted to the site and someone was saying that i think that she was sleeping with her students I, I forgot what the post was about and i made the remark why are all um teachers or high school teachers freaks in the sack that was my remark and they took it they they basically said since i i edited and wrote that technically i'm an editor and not a, a content i basically created the content so that was their that was their play and they and they took it through the kentucky court system so you have to imagine me flying to kentucky uh sitting in in two jury trials for i don't know 14 days or whatever it is and the jury the jury's all like female old um kentucky you know so they're looking at me and her her lawyers like basically making make it out like I'm a terrorist. So I had no shot of winning these trials and the judge involved was not a big fan of, of mine either. Um, and they kept playing like doc, Dr. Phil episodes. And it was like, I felt like I was like on a murder trial, you know? So I, I eventually ended up, first one was a hung jury. The second one I lost. And then I went to a higher court. And as soon as I got to the higher courts, they were like, you know, CDA all day. And then, and then um, I won that case. But the crazier part was, is she, I, she actually was hooking up with her student and ended up marrying the kid and like get, having kids with him and the whole thing. Like it was, it was real. And I still, I, to this day, I'm just in shock that it even got this far because the post was actually true in the end. And the judge threw out all the, all, all the, cause she went to jail for it or she got, arrested for it for sleeping with their oh, student wow. yeah so it, it was crazy to me that i was the one on trial for her you know doing something illegal and yeah. she was doing it yeah that's crazy. Yeah, that, was yeah. crazy that was the crazy part that like a lot of these things that got submitted 
even if uh, some of it wasn't true, there was enough there where something was was legitimate. You know, there was parts and pieces that were legitimate. But you know, I would get sued all the time. I've been sued fifty times, and and I've won fifty times. So like, but for me, that was at the beginning. It was scary, but but then it got fun because I would like you know, I would basically get legal fees and. It, it would be if I wasn't getting sued, I felt like I was doing something wrong, to be honest, which is weird. Now, when you look at like a site like Des Moines, uh, you know, this Instagram page that all they do is just post like blind items and kind of it's essentially the dirty dot com. But on Instagram, do you laugh to yourself and think I did this 20 years ago? <laughs> you I know, see. like this is this was my gig. I, well, I see the same thing with Barstool. I see the same thing with everything. You know, if I, if I, if I wrote it out, I probably would, would have, uh, I would have been huge, but the problem is you can't have a family. You can't, can't be a normal person with that lifestyle. Just, it's just not possible. Like you become, you become who you, who that I didn't want to be the dirty guy. Like that was never my goal in life. You know, like for some people, they want to be TMZ. They want to be, you know, their brand. I wanted to be Nick. I didn't want to be the dirty.com ever. Like that wasn't me. And people that know me are shocked that they, that I created this thing. Um, so that's why I, I try so hard to distance myself. I've rebranded, you know, I took two years off and I've created other, other companies that are really successful. Um, but, but yeah, no Dax, I see those things all the time and I laugh because, you know, they think they're so cool but I look at it from a perspective like, wow, they're not they're They have no idea like that's because they didn't have to go through the trenches that I had to go. Like I had to literally pave the way for all these idiots, you know? Yeah. Did, did you have a how do you find out things are factual? It's, you know, it's people send you blind items all the time, I'm sure. But, you know, you, how do you decide if it's worth posting or if it's actually accurate? Um, I don't. You know, it's it's not my job to decipher what's fact or fiction. That's not what that's not what what it was. Uh, what it was was um, here's an image. You know, do you th do you think this chick's hot or something? Or and then what? Where we really started becoming successful is because a lot of these politicians or athletes or celebrities would cheat on their spouses. And the girls, the mistresses would come to us saying, I have no voice, you know, um, this is what happened. And then I would have to choose if, you know, they're, they're real or fake, but I wouldn't really base it on their story. I would base it on, Hey, what factual evidence do you have? Which is like a photo or a video. Like when I broke the Carlos danger and the Anthony Weiner, um, story, which was massive, um, I basically gambled. She sent me a picture of his toes compared to another picture of his toes. And I had to match the toes to, to know that this, this, these were his, his, uh, D picks. I don't know if we're allowed to talk about this. So you can talk about it. It's all so, good. So, yeah. So it, it's just taking risks and gambles and, and like people don't know this too. I broke the Hulk Hogan sex tape. Like that was me that put that out there. They came to me and said, Hey, he, we have a sex tape with Hulk Hogan. Do you want to run it? I'm like, hell no, I want nothing to do with it, but send me some, some screenshots. Let me at least tell people that it, ex it exists. And we put it out there and then TMZ picked it up. And then, you know, the rest was history. They sent it, they put it, sent in an envelope to Gawker and they had fun with it. So, so there's like little things that people use the dirty for to leak the story. And I wouldn't call it a blind item because I hate, like, I'm not a big blind item fan because it's anyone could say, hey, this person slept with this person or this person was spotted here or whatever. I was more of like, I, I want to see the image. Like, I want to see the actual factual evidence and run with that. Um, but the honest answer is I, I couldn't tell you what's real or what's not real. That wasn't that wasn't my job. My job as a journalist was to get the story, um, give it some legs let it get out there and let the real people do the work. Yeah. Well, I know you don't want to obviously talk about the dirty the whole time because this is your past. We're just fascinated because it was obviously such a big website during our, you know, 
start in the business. But I do want to know, did this site make just a shit ton of money? Because I got to imagine it did. Um, I got to be careful what I, I say here because I'm still going through a, a divorce process. So... <laughs> So the, the reality is, is it, it made, it made enough money to have a lot of fun. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it made crazy money only because of the content. The content was really hard to monetize. Um, To, to figure out a a niche model like that, you need to have like similar what like Barcel's doing is they're going towards like the gambling route or the liquor route. You know, you have to find what your, um, where the money comes from. But back then it was different. We didn't have like programmatic wasn't really a thing back then. Like it wasn't Mm -hmm. just started coming up, but Google wouldn't even touch the dirty. Like it wasn't even the, it wasn't the content. The domain was, was flagged. So it was really hard to monetize. And the only way to monetize was to make me go on the road and party with people. So Mm. that sucked. Like that was the worst because you're going to different cities, you're sleeping with random women and you feel really guilty about yourself the next day. It was, it's great in the moment, but it was, it was really tough for me because I was getting paid, you know, 10, 25,000 a pop to show up for a couple hours in these different cities and, uh, and just party with people. So, um, it, it took a huge toll on my body. It took, it, it put me in a, a pretty dark place because of the alcohol and stuff, but that was the big, the biggest, I would say 75% of the revenue driver. And then the others you're looking at just direct advertisers and just coming up with different campaigns. But, uh, but yeah, the traffic was insane. When, when I say insane, you're talking about a religious cult following, uh, of about 10 million people that literally came to the site. Like you're going to Instagram, you're going to it. Like my average visitor would come to the site at least 16 to 20 times a day. So wow. it was, it was, but, it was insane. And yeah, I don't know. Then you, like you said, that double-edged sort of crazy traffic, but we can't get, you know, that big monetization because there's no sponsors are just flooding you saying, yes, I'd like to be tied to this product. So the only way to do it, Dax was to tell them, Hey, come, come hang out with me in Albuquerque, New Mexico. You know what I mean? Like it was, it was, it was that type of a platform, which it was so frustrating because we had so many, so much traffic, but we couldn't figure out how do you, how do you monetize each person? We just needed, we just needed a dollar from each person. You know what it's I mean? like, it should have been like a paywall at a certain point. I think people would have paid for the content, but yeah. Wow. So, so interesting, but it's old, it's old, everyone, everyone, everyone cashed out. So it is what it is. Yeah. How often were celebrities hitting you up to be on there? Like they wanted to be on it themselves. It wasn't celebrities as much as it was like new up and coming influencers, you know, like I would get into fake fights with Jake Paul and these guys before they were like big and all these guys when they were like, I don't know, at the, at the towards my tail end of the dirty when they were at like a million followers they would they would submit themselves and pretend like similar to how they do with these boxing fights now like nick you're an asshole and i would go back and like hey you know you have a receding hairline whatever like i would just go back with these guys right and it it worked for them like it, it built a following it built a base um but celebrity wise it wasn't it wasn't much unless it was like a model or a supermodel or something asking if I would sleep with them. That was there was a would you section that was like pretty popular and that was that was pretty much it. But uh, but I would get a lot of girls like the big the big one that was when the Ashton Kutcher Demi Moore, that Sarah Leal girl, she came, you know, we got that information and it was fire. Like that that so blew up. Actually- so what was that story? Can you fill us in? So people might not be familiar with that story. So Ashton Kutcher went down to San Diego. He stayed at the Hard Rock. And uh, these two girls, um, Sarah Leal, which, which was the main one who we had the affair with, uh, they were just in the hot tub. And I was getting like play by play, like as it was going down, like I didn't even believe it. Like they were submitting in real time. That's why how crazy it was to me. These girls were like, hey, we're about to sleep with Ashton Kutcher. Um, and they're submitting themselves to get famous. So, so 
I was like, okay, is this real? So I'm, I'm hitting up my contacts in San Diego. Like, Hey, is Ashton at the hard rock? Cause these girls are like taking pictures with him in a hot tub and, and uh, they're trying to, to send them to me and, and they verified it was legit. And, she, and he put her in a taxi the next day. It was crazy. Like, and, and I posted it and it was real and, and the paparazzi and everyone did their job and followed up on the story. Similar to the stormy Daniels, stormy Daniels came to us and gave us the whole story. And, and it was crazy to me about the Trump thing. I broke that so long ago, like two years before it even hit, hit like anything. And the wall street journal did a full investigation and they want a Pulitzer for it. It was great. So what do you think is the biggest story the dirty ever broke? Cause I mean, you've, I mean, just we've in the last five minutes talked about some huge stories, but what do you feel like is the biggest one that trumped them all? Um, I think we had a couple of the Tiger Woods girls that that, that started that whole cycle. Um, I don't know. It's we've had a lot of big ones. I think uh, if I had to go with the one that did the best traffic wise. I know this is going to sound crazy, but our highest traffic ever, and it's not even, they're not even like, well, I guess they're celebrities now, but Amanda Cerny and Lele Pons. Their, their arguments, their fights. Their, Amanda Cerny found out Lele Pons, when they, when they used to, to be best friends, was deleting her YouTube videos in some kind of jealous war. Yeah. And, and, uh, Amanda came to me and said, Hey, I found out Lele's doing this to me. Can you, I want to, I want to submit this. I want to post this and give the play by play. I have never seen Dax. I have never seen like my servers crashed. And I was like, wow, this influencer thing is like a real, a real thing. And I'm not even kidding. We, we must've done a hundred million uniques in one week. It was, wow. it was the craziest thing. And it got picked up by like Vogue and like the most random things. And it was it. That was a wrap. They were never friends again. It was so like, funny. We we literally just had Amanda on like two months ago. And we asked her about that. And like, did you guys ever make up? Like, where are you at with that? And she basically, what did she say, Adam? She, she said pretty much like, no, but we're not like yeah, at war anymore. Yeah, they don't. It's not like uh, awkward in front of each other, but they're not close. I don't think. Yeah, but Layla was like like deleting her because she didn't yeah. want it to surpass her. So it yeah. was it was awesome. And then Amanda was giving me all the info, like, and I was like thinking in my head, I'm like, wow, this is kind of like American Psycho type stuff. And and yeah. uh, it was awesome. So, like, have your friend's password, delete stuff, so that you can get yeah. a step ahead. Like. That's some diabolical shit right there. Yeah, it was it was awesome. But I've never seen that much traffic in my life. I've never seen a, I've never seen it was like Justin Bieber stuff. It was it was insane. Like because there were, you had two you had two fan bases fighting each other. Um, mm -hmm. It was like Black Panther. It was crazy. That's so funny. I'm how many how many sex tapes have you seen that like won't go out there like that are not out in the public? Uh celebrity sex tapes probably like 17 yeah like crazy ones i've seen and don't get me wrong we've done a lot of catch and kill the dirty the dirty that was another side of the business um that you know people don't know um that yeah that that's a big i think our industry if you look at our industry the, the totality of where the real money's at that's where it is the lawyers are the ones, the Marty Singers, these guys, they make so much money off killing stories and making sure they don't hit the wire. Um, that's something that still needs to be addressed in our industry. So what does that mean, though, catching like, again, I'm just talking for the some people aren't familiar with that and Marty Singer, what he does. So how do they make money? What tell me that side of the industry? That well, it's, it's not just Marty, but yeah, you know, that side of the business is when there is a tape that's out. Um, you have to evaluate if you get a, a photo or a tape, you have to evaluate how much you can monetize off that tape. And the problem is with 
the sex tapes is no advertiser is going to touch it. It's great for traffic, but you can't monetize it. So the only way you can, you can make actual real hard money is the person on that tape itself needs to say, okay, yeah, basically say, Hey, you know, you know, take a celebrity, a list celebrity and the person who the person, you know, that was slept with and they go to that law firm and they go to a person like Marty or whatever. And they say like, Hey, um, here's the value that we think this is worth. And with the dirty, they did that all the time. They used to come to us and say, Hey, tease this, put this out there that, Hey, this exists. And then we would never hear from the person again. So they would use us to basically bait the lawyer in or beat the team in and make it go away. Do you ever, because I know other sites would buy content like that at a, a lower price and then just sell it back to the select I, I for a much higher it. price. Dax, I couldn't afford it. I wish that, yeah. but I couldn't afford it. Like you're talking about, you're talking about, and not to be like a blind item person, but there's a very, 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 I would say the highest level tennis player that literally bought their tape back for $10 million. So you're, you, you, you're, you're talking about people in, in price ranges that don't even, we can't even fathom it, you know? So yep. I was never in that ball game. Plus it was, it's too, that, that's just, when you're going down that road, then you're like, you have, you have demons, you know, you have closet demons and you just don't want that. You don't want to be, you want to be able to sleep a little bit. Um, but yeah, but, but Dax, I don't know if you remember this, this is right when the dirty started a big story that went away. There was a cheerleader that had an affair with Kobe on the Lakers. Remember her name was Vanessa Curry. It was Curry, not Vanessa Curry. Um, it was something Curry. I think it was Vanessa Curry was her name, but she, okay. the Lakers photoshopped her out of the calendar. And it was one of our first like big breaking stories. And we were riding it so hard. They photoshopped her out of the, the Laker cheerleaders and somehow she just vanished off the face of the earth. She was paid to like literally disappear. Just go was, away. Just go away. It was gone. And this wow. was this was like in the infancy of the dirty days. And I remember we were we were emailing their PR and like asking for statements and the whole thing. It was it was the most insane thing I've ever seen. And it was my first glimpse of catch and kill. That was my first, very first experience that they literally paid to make a person disappear. And I, and, I, so nuts. and I think the lawyer on that one was Keith Davidson. So that was that was the guy that that somehow, you know, well, what is that show? Dexter or whatever? Yeah. Right down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. He, he is the uh, the real life Dexter. So interesting. Yeah. I love this stuff. It's so interesting. Yeah. yeah Just, it's, it's interesting to us, but it's not interesting to people. I don't think uh, no, you I, might be surprised. You know this is the stuff because they're interested in the real deal, but they don't, they see a, a watered down version on most sites and it doesn't even make most sites because some of this stuff, you know, they, they also had need to keep the relationships with the celebrities and the publicists. So they won't pick up the stories, but this is, you know, we like to say on this podcast, we always like to humanize Hollywood and show like what it really is, the business of it. And this is part of the business and what happens, you know? So it's, yeah. it's pretty wild. How many times have you had, you know, it's going to sound like people trying to out celebrities. You know, we see this actor with another male actor, you know, actress and another male, female actress. How often was that going around? So I was the one. Let's see how I could do this. So before Anderson Cooper came out, I was going to, for some reason, he just didn't like me. And, and uh, I was, I because at that time we were doing the, that cheerleader trial and he was on this the, he was just on this girl's nuts just you know she would cry on TV and the whole thing and he would he would just Anderson just didn't like me he just thought I was an evil person and uh, I was I was ready to out him like literally I was that pissed off that I was re I was really ready to to tell everybody that he was gay and uh, he beat me to the punch. So, so there was, there was times like that where back then. Are you glad that happened? Like, are you glad that you didn't do it though? At the yeah, end of the day, like course. for your own conscience? Of course, and stuff? of course. 
Dax, I was, I was not a good person. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and, and say like, Hey, like, you know, but you have to understand like during that time period, people were just not nice. Like it was just, they, they felt empowered when you could belittle someone and it's different now. It's, it's just a different time. But, but I, I never, I never took the time to think. I just reacted, reacted, reacted because I was just in a different mindset. I was like, okay, well, there's nothing like me and I can, I can just be myself. And I'm, I'm starting to feel back to myself now that I'm, I'm newly single again. Um, because I was so censored. I was like being a family guy makes you so like, I have like emotions and feelings that you have to hold back. But yes, to answer your question, um, there's part of me that wanted to gut him, but there's another part of me that is like, oh, okay, well, he, he did it on his own accord. I, I, I don't want to be that guy. Um, because now we're in a different time. You can't do that to people. Like if you do that, it's like the end of the world. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. obviously you stepped away from the dirt. What was it? Four years ago, you said? Yeah. So since then, like, obviously you've changed a lot, your family situation. What, what have you been up to since leaving the dirty? Just for people out there that don't know. It's been getting divorced. That's what he's been doing, bud. <laughs> now I want to know the other stuff before we get to the divorce. Um, so, so I start, so I went back to school like Van Wilder. I, I found Saddleback as a community college out here and I had nothing to do. I tried to golf. I sucked at that. Um, I tried to just do, you know, retirement things. Um, and uh, then I started a company called Relic since I looked at myself as a relic and uh, I started consulting. I started basically helping uh, Us Weekly, In Touch, Life and Style, like all these different gossip sites help them monetize and get traffic. And uh, we've been, we, we crushed it, We're making millions and millions of dollars. And um, it was great because I was behind the scenes, just Wizard of Oz, getting exclusives, doing all this stuff. And um, I still have that business. That business is doing really well. And then I just started a new site called Celeb and celebmagazine.com. And it's just mainstream. I'm trying to go for more of a high end lifestyle. Now that I'm 42, I, I actually like rich things now and I don't have time for um, like, I, I can't wait in line. I can't, there's just things I can't do anymore because I'm just older. So I, I like more of the affluent stuff and I want to showcase the things that I like. I've built a team and we're doing really, really well. We've it's almost one year and we've, we've surpassed, like the five year mark of the dirty. So, and it's just crazy to me be that, that there's an audience, like my audience has gotten older and more mature and they're still there. Um, and now I'm starting to shoot my own content and I'm gonna start making it a streaming. We have an app, Celeb app, and I'm gonna start doing original content. Um, still break stories and stuff like that, but I wanna show people more of the reality, similar to like what we're doing here and explaining it. I actually wanna pull the curtain back um and that's my goal now is to show people hey the other side the ugly side of media because people don't see you know you see a story go up but they don't see how the story develops and they don't see and dax knows you guys both know like we've been in the bullpens where you have a guy that's just a midget just yelling at you like belittling you and just going crazy because we need to break the story before before anyone else does and we have to verify the source. We need to talk to the lawyer. We got to do all this stuff. So I want to show that element to it, but I also want to show the, the human side of myself and what I'm going through and my struggles. Um, just trying to be a man in this world and survive. It's just crazy. And um, yeah, so so it's just it's just a new me. It's it's the Richie Rich version. That's cool. I like it. I like it. I like the uh, because I I'm in that same boat of feeling like, you know, you, you come into the industry doing something and people label you as that. And then you're like, no, now I got to break, break free from that. I mean, obviously I was at TMZ for 12 years. So that's how everyone knew me is just Dax from TMZ. So it's been a, a nice change to just be Dax Holt for once, you know? Yes. So I got to imagine the same for you. 
Um, did you do you get along with some of those like old bloggers like Perez and stuff or no? no. Did you ever? He just doesn't like me. No, no. He just thought he's. I, I don't think I've ever put him down, but he he every time he gets a chance, he he takes a shot at me, and um, which makes no sense. Like and I, like I have nothing against the guy. We came up in the same time. He was Paris Hilton. I was Nicole Richie. That was it. Like that was, the, that was, he went with that way. I went with my way and I was the straight version. He was the gay version and uh, it worked out for both of us. Yeah. How are you, you know, obviously we just read in your post, your, uh, you know, your recent divorced, you know, how are you holding up? You know, I think that's what people really want to know. Um, it's been really hard because I just, I just don't, she divorced me. So, and, and it, it blows my mind that like she has her own fan base and they look at me like I'm some sort of monster. And I've, I was so good in the, in, in the marriage. Like I'm still, I'm still in shock. I'm still confused. Um, she decided that she wanted to do it on our anniversary our 11 year anniversary i got her a rolex a ring like the whole thing i was like hey here you go we made it we made it this long and um beautiful family everything's I, you know to me i thought everything was fine and she just said hey you know i don't want to do this anymore and i want to figure out who i am and uh that was that the, it, it was Fully just out of the blue, like you thought everything was good. Yeah. And the crazy part is she told me, like, hey, you know, I just want to tell you the last six months, you're probably the best husband in the world. And I was and and it wasn't that I was trying to be the best husband. I was just, I'm just older and I just, you know, I, I care about my children and my family and I try to provide a lifestyle that I thought she wanted, which was over the top, and I provided and made sure it happened. Um, but there was, you know, there were, there were a lot of elements, you know, like we were shoot, we were, she was, she was doing, um, tapes for, for housewives. So we were, we were in the, in the process of being newly casted for the real housewives of Orange County. So that was going down in the middle of this. And we had to put on this like facade that, you know, everything's happy, happy, go lucky. And, uh, I didn't, I, I wasn't, I wasn't going to do like, I wasn't about it. First of all, the money was terrible and the big storyline, which, which was th this last season was all about like, Hey, like Branwyn and being gay. And then Kelly being so like, you know, politically her political views. Um, and we were, and we're friends with Kelly Dodd or I'm friends with Kelly Dodd. So, I think there was a lot of pushback there because obviously Kelly just got fired. And I think that if, if we would have decided to stay on, Kelly probably would have stayed on the show because they were looking for different matches. Um, but I don't know where that went. I don't know. I, I, in my mind, I, I think part of the divorce was, is that they were afraid of me. Like Andy, Andy from Bravo is not a fan of mine. So um, I don't know if, if that had some sort of something to do with it. I don't know. So um, that's probably a question for David Weintraub who put the deal together. So I don't know, but yeah, that that's going through that happened. I, I just, I honestly, guys, I have no idea. It's been like, literally I woke up one day and my life just flipped and, and I had, I, there's no, there was never been a chance for me to even reconcile. She called her dad, her dad got her a lawyer obviously he's been through this six times or whatever. And, and I was best friends with her dad. And I just don't, I don't understand what, what I did. Like, I really have don't. You, have you talked to her dad at all? No, he, he blocked me, cut me off. Like it, it was like, it's like a full attack. And I, I'm just shocked that he wouldn't like as a father be like, Hey, you guys should probably like try to work this out for your children, you know? Yeah. So so I'm still in that mode of like, what did I do wrong? But every day I'm waking up and I'm starting to realize like, wow, this is crazy. Like I was really silenced in this relationship. I was really, um, I really held back who I was 
trying to be a good father, being a good person. Um, in the last 11 years, she really like um, controlled me, which wasn't a bad thing, but she just really like kept secrets in, you know, when I was Nick Ritchie, like I wanted to be out. I wanted to be part of the people. She wanted to be in her hole and in her little bubble. And now I feel great because now I can, I can move. I can go to Miami. I can go to New York. I can have meetings. I can, I can start being who I really am. Um, but from a family perspective, it, it kills me. Like, you know, I can't even, it's put it, put it this way. I'm paying to see my half my children's life, not take away half my children's life. And, and I have to pay someone to do that. How does that make any sense? That's what the actual core of divorce is, is basically I'm paying someone every month to go live their life and, and be happy. And I have to sit here and be miserable because I get to miss half my kid's life. So emotionally it, it, it kills me inside. Yeah. Uh. That's a, it's a definitely a perspective to look at it. Um, do you think there was any like infidelity? I mean, like that's the only thing that I always go to when it's so abrupt and it's like out of the blue that I'm like, what the, like, where did this come from? That's the only thing that I ever kind of just start to question. You know, I, I question it. Obviously I read what she told page six and, and the New York post. And I was just like, Wait, what did she tell page six? Is that 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 we have we haven't been intimate in over a year? Yeah, which is which, which is not true. So, so there's a lot of things that she told them that were lies, which kind of made me think that okay, is she like is she trying to defend somebody, or is there someone that like out there that she's trying to like, you know, that she's been lying to, saying like, hey, I'm not with Nick that that way, which uh, which, but for me personally, honestly, I just I just don't even want to know. I, yeah, that got rich as hell. So I, whoever he is, good luck. Yeah, Dang, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm it's 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 rough. But then you know, I see a thing in Miami, and there's a, a banner going across the sky, like on the beach, and says like Nick Ritchie is back. Uh, what 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 was that? I'm back. I, I, <laughs> it's, it's, I, I, listen, the reality is, is the world needs me. I need the world. I'm starting to realize my only best friends are in my DMs. It's a different, it's a different time, you know? So uh, it's great connect, reconnecting with, with you guys and just like my old friends and seeing that like everyone's on the come up and they, for the first time ever, I'm starting to see indiv individuality. Like everyone's actually like getting outside of their box of becoming their own brand. And I feel like I have a lot to do with that because I inspire people to, to be themselves. Um, and I have a lot to give. And, and I think that I've been selling the world short because I've been giving myself to Shane. I've been giving myself to family when the reality is the world is my family and I have to be okay with, with being that guy. And, and I am, and I, and I think not only Miami, not only Vegas, like I want to go international. I really think I have, I have, my goals are so lofty, but I know I can hit them because I've done them before. So um, I am back, boys. It, it, it's it's going to be a good time. <laughs> yeah, dude. And I know you're doing I some like stuff it. in Vegas right now. Like you, you got some big things in Vegas right now. Tell us about this stuff. Go yeah, I signed a deal with uh, Resorts World, which is the new hotel on the Strip right across from Wynn. It's massive. It's it's amazing. I can't wait for you guys to see it. Um, I, I have a three three uh, appearances there this this year or yeah twenty to, through twenty twenty two so it's a it's a two to three year deal and um, I'm a white tiger again I show up take pictures make love and get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> I love, so is, are these club appearances? What are it's just come party with Nick Ritchie kind of thing? It's a little bit different because now I'm like gearing towards the face of hospitality. So, so I'm, I'm literally showcasing properties, um, doing video content, but also like doing the club thing, but also showing, just showing face, walking around the property, uh, taking pictures and, and basically embracing this as my new home. And, uh, Vegas has always been good to me. And now I'm like super excited because it's brand new. It's something fresh. 
and all the big celebrities are are getting behind it. Brody Jenner is going to be uh, DJing there. Paris Hilton's DJing there. So now you're having different perspectives outside the box of the big DJs. You're having the celebrity DJs. Um, so I think it's going to be really, really good. I'm really excited about it, to be honest. And not only that, dude, you're in the you're in the crypto world. You got to it's a hard world to explain. But what, what's your involvement in it? Uh, so I have Nick Coin, Nick Nick being me, and it's I did I did it the opposite way. Like everyone's just like basically going with the flow. I, I'm like, okay, I want a coin where it's based on on my productivity and my success. So basically, people are are investing in it's called BitClout, but I have an actual coin under Nick Ritchie that you can you can just put ten bucks in or whatever. It started at hundred and fifty dollars and now it's at it's over a thousand um and i'm not i'm not i'm like in it for the long haul this isn't like a, a cash out quick kind of thing because i really think i can get i can get this coin up to 10 to, to fifteen thousand. um so anyone who's like an old school fan of mine or just wants to put some money in there and then walk away for like five years this is this is how you do it because it's going to be based off my success. So the more I climb, the more the coin value rises. Um, so I, everyone, listen, I think all the crypto stuff, it's high volatility, it's high risk. But if you want something that's solid, as long as I'm alive, we're going to make a lot of money. Um, so Nick Coin is my coin. And it's actually Sean Phillips. I don't know if you guys know who Sean Phillips is, the football player. He told me, he told me, I asked him, what do you invest in? And he said, only invest in yourself. So that's what I'm doing. I'm investing in myself. And, and listen, I ha I've never lost except for marriage, over for two in marriage. But other than that, like I can, I can pull this off and, and make people a lot of money. That's awesome. I, I was thinking, cause the other day, I think I saw something. I was like, Oh, uh, I went to go look at myself, but I had to like sign up for an account. I was like, eh, never mind, I'm out. <laughs> But I like the, this uh, this concept of invest in yourself. It's like the perfect way to go into crypto if people are not like, you know, wanting to or are nervous about crypto. Because like you said, there's so much volatility that you're like, I don't know what to invest in. I don't know what's going to take off, where I'm going to lose money. So for me, I just tend to stay out of it. But I like this idea of you pushing your own coin. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I'm excited about it because if it fails, it's it's on me. It's not on you. It's on me. You know, so um, and I'm not a big I'm not a big person who believes in that in like that failure stuff. Like I wake up every day and I'm so excited about how do I win? How do I win? You know, so I think I think it's going to be really, really good. Um, I know Mike Walters has put in a lot of money, so I can't fail. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, dude. That's awesome, dude. Well, listen, Nick, it's uh, it's great to have you on the podcast. I'm glad you're uh, you're in a, you're on the right path. You're in a good place, and I'm excited to see what happens with the coin. Excited to see what happens in Vegas. Uh, and, and and you're also doing this travel series, dude. Which oh, yeah. is like, what is it? What you're all over the place. What is this travel series? So I'm shooting right now. I'm shooting. I, everyone download the celeb app. So I'm shooting original content. Um, 10 M is the name of the travel show. It's directed by, uh, Z who's uh, really big in Vegas, Zarnaz. Um, she put together a, a, a package and then I have a producer, like I have a real team doing this. It's crazy. And, um, we're basically showcasing all the coolest spots around the world where I basically go in there and try to find myself through high-end places the last episode we did was in big sky montana i've never been in the snow before like i'm persian like it's it's not a thing <laughs> so, so i went out there and i was just you know i'm i'm seeing things for the first time i'm opening up my mind and it just it's just amazing and then we have uh jamaica next and then i have like como like there's a whole bunch of cool spots on the horizon but i'm also shooting like five other shows richie rides is one richie rich so it's going to be all original content that you can find on the app because i'm going to make this thing into the new media wave of like netflix it's going to be so cool and eventually you guys are going to have your own show it's going to be really good you know <laughs> i like it 
I <laughs> like it, Nick. Awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, follow Nick Ritchie. You know, check out his celeb magazine. Again, it's a high-end magazine that's coming out. It's really cool. Look out for his travel series. Invest in his coin because uh, he's a raisin stock. He's a good dude. And honestly, I know for myself, I wouldn't be in the position I'm now. I, I am in if it wasn't for guys like Nick to kind of create, you know, create the path. And uh, he's a legend. The guy is, you know, the guy is a legend. Nick, thank you so much for joining us, brother. Anytime. Uh, hopefully I can do this again in six months to a year. Let's see where I get. Let's see if I'm still here. Uh, Nick Ritchie, man. He's uh, how how close was his relationship with, you know, because he had a different site. But how close was his relationship with, like TMZ when you were working there at the time? No, I think we were we were really close. I mean, I, I've known Nick for I think it's like, again, 15 years or something like that, uh, just because. Like he said, he was breaking a lot of stories and, you know, and those stories turned into bigger stories on TMZ, uh, you know, when they got flushed out even more. Um, and it, it's it's funny because he really was like the party boy and he's so different now just in the way we talk to him. Like, yeah, he was always just like crazy, crazy party guy. And I I can tell now he is family man yeah. <laughs> you know it's a, it's a fun transition you know i like i like seeing those those changes in people over the years because I, I feel the same way like my life changed so much after getting married and having children and you know your perspectives on life change a lot yeah who was in his crew who was he hanging out with though was he hanging out with celebrities or was he just kind of partying and just around the scene I felt like he was always the guy that was like, no, I don't want to be friends with celebs because his website, once you become friends with celebs, then you tend not to want to break the stories. You know what I'm saying? Like then, then when a story comes in and it's good, but it's your friend, you're like, oh, I don't want to post it. So I, I feel like he was one of those people that was always like, nope, uh, work and, and play and I, I'm not going to cross them. So just don't be friends with anyone. Yeah, I struggle with that myself. I'm like, how do I? Because I, you know, I'm not a bad guy, and I struggle with like how of a, how much of a, you know, sometimes with some of these celebrities, like, do I want to kind of be go a little extra? Do you know? And where where is mm -hmm. the line? You know, where like, yeah, of course I would love to be friends with some of these people, but realistically, it's like they're they're not gonna be my friends. You know, not all of them. So I'm like, especially it's not even the celebrities; it's the publicists. So I'm like, fuck the publicists. I'm gonna. You know, like I actually sometimes I'll even shoot the people not because I want to. It's because your publicist was an asshole, you know, and like and it's like your team's not cool. You know, so yeah. it's been weird for me. But uh, thank you guys for listening. And uh, you could leave a review. That's the best thing to do. Support this podcast is leave a five star review. And um, and uh, we read reviews. leave those reviews, people, please. And then, uh, you know, if you want to be a part, we didn't do it today. We didn't do fan chat, uh, fan question roulette. Uh, just honestly just didn't get to it but if you want to be a part of it submit us a video you can dm us on instagram um or you can call us up and leave us a message at 833 hwr line 833 hwr line uh but we love having people part of the show yes yeah so uh you find me at, at adam glenn you find this podcast we're on you know we have the video components on youtube or on tiktok facebook Instagram, Twitter, we're on it all. You can find Dax Holt at D A X H O L T. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching Hollywood Raw. Thank you for joining us. Make sure you thumbs up to this video, subscribe. That way we can give you endless content from inside Hollywood.